as you enter the lair of the dragon, all you can see is two red flaming eyes, and there's a voice in your head. You all shall die. Hey, what is up? I am Timur Sol and you are watching Digital Toolkit, a show where I talk about different tools that may or may not help uh, digital DMs in their games. Today I'm taking a look at Voice Mod. What is Voice Mod? How does it work? And what can we do with it? How does it fit into our games? So just let's start up. Um, Voice Mod is something like a virtual microphone that clings onto your real device, onto your real, uh, onto your real mi microphone, takes that signal and produces something different. Now, in Dungeons and Dragons, it's typical that the DM has to use different voices, has different voices for different characters, uh, has uh, sometimes has to play characters that are inhuman uh, in a way. So, for example, you might have to play a dragon, an, um, a vivern, or whatever else you might be uh, forced to play at Mind Flayer, or whatever other creature that has some eerie or unprobable inhuman voice. Now. Most DMs would probably just wave a hand on that. You can use accents, you can use other tricks that make your voice sound a little bit different. Um, there's many, many different ways in which you can uh, force your voice to do something. Don't ever feel forced to do a voice because you saw some voiceover actors do voices. They do it for a living. It's not like everybody uh, has the same capabilities and capacity to make voices or create voices in their head that would fit the narrative. And this is where voice mod comes to help. Voice mod is something that creates voices for us. We have different possibilities to use these voices and we will see some of these possibilities during this, uh, during this episode. But first I would like to just as usually give a brief history of the company that is doing voice mod. Voice mod was created by three brothers in Spain and um, probably somewhere mid 2000, 2005, something like that. Um, by 2018, they were employing over 55 uh, employees already. But the core three uh, brothers that established the company, they were musicians. They initially thought about a broader audience, but, um, but they noticed that they have a pretty, pretty clear audience in the PC and gaming industry. And I'm going to quote one, uh, one example from how they think about their technology uh, from an interview that I found. We started with the broader audience, but we found out that we had a stronger value proposition, strong value proposition for gamers and content creators on the PC. The tech is a complex thing to do that requires digital signal processing that takes analog data, such as a voice, and converts it into digital form. Digital signal processing used to require heavy-duty hardware that didn't produce sound in real time, but now it can be done in software on today's dev devices easily. The quality of the voice conversion became good, the uses opened up. Um, you can now use the voice filters to create realistic human voice if you wish, and that can make something like an online game appear to be more immersive or realistic. Now it takes about 1% of your computer's central processing unit performance. So I checked that, in fact it takes 1.1% uh, of my computer, but the fact is that the software is pretty uh, easy on your computer. Uh, I don't use it often. It's not like I use voice mod for every single campaign or every single session that I use, uh, but there are cases in which I feel that voice mod has a really good benefit for my games. Um, if you've ever been doing voices, you might feel a strain that you put a strain on your throat. Sometimes it's really better to use a software, a tool that will let you keep, make you keep your health and make you um, sound as if you are a completely different creature, seamless. Now, the voice mod costs about, is subscription-based, and uh, I actually had a rough time finding what the nowadays price for voice mod is. So I bought it for, I think, 20 bucks uh, one year ago. But what I read from now, there's no pricing on their website. What I, read, what I read now is that it costs probably around 40 bucks. But there are, often you will find some deals or some promotions, some coupons or something like that that will allow you to buy it cheaper. Um, so you will have to hunt for that. There's also three types of subscription. You can have the free trial for subscription, which doesn't give you much options. It gives you like five or seven voices each week. 
uh, and they are generated at random you won't be able to also use your own created voices uh, so i wouldn't recommend that you can have the three months subscription for three or four bucks and well one year subscription for i believe 10 bucks it might be more right now the thing is that you will get the proper price only when you install the trial of uh, of voicemail and additionally from what i heard voicemail has an interesting way of um of forcing your you or enforcing their um their full subscription plan um by making a very brief window for you after you install the trial you will have something like a couple of hours or a couple of days uh, to use a special uh, discount that you could get like 50 percent discount so you could get the software cheaper there's also a uh, option for a lifetime license and this is the license that i use and that cost me exactly 20 bucks so we have three months one year and a lifetime subscription option um so how to use it this is the interesting part right so this is my voice box uh, voice mod um voice mod screen this is the main screen that you get when you pull out the um pull out the whole software usually it starts up with your windows and it works as a, vi a virtual monitor vi virtual uh microphone that simply um is fed further on into your discord or zoom or whatever else uh, now to hear myself uh, and to know what i'm doing right now uh, i'm gonna have to use my headphones so that you just allow me to put them on uh, i have a slight delay on my headphones right now so uh so please uh forgive me if i'm gonna be stuttering or something like that um you have your voices uh listed over here and as you see i'm using right now i'm using nothing um, that is because I don't want to modify my voice this instant. But um, if I would like to change my voice uh, to sound deeper, for example, I could go over here and pump up the bass like this, go down with the middle and treble, and this is not exactly audible. Now, this is a problem that VoiceMod has. I mean, VoiceMod is a great software, but... Um, the audibility of some of these voices is very very poor if you ask me uh, but most of them actually they uh, convey what the title says but uh, most of them won't be usable in our games most of them sound um very uh, alike to each other uh, so robotic voices for sound very very similar um deep voices sound very very similar and so on and so on but there are voices that can be used with uh, success so for example if you check the titan the Titan is a very deep voice um, that can be used, used for dragons, titans, giants, and so on. The typical deep voice can be used if you are, for example, wanting to use an ogre or something like that. There are some crazy voices like this. There are lesser crazy voices. Like the cave. Um, now, I believe you start to get the idea of how voice mod uh, works. You just click a simple icon and you get the voice that you are interested in. And there's an additional feature in VoiceMod Pro that uh, allows you to use soundboards. So there's a uh, there's a button on the left, soundboards, and you have all the soundboards over here that VoiceMod prepared for you or that you created by your own. This is an interesting feature because this makes your microphone, your virtual microphone, the VoiceMod microphone, feed some additional ambience, SFX or uh, sounds into your microphone and to your receiver so if we go for example for um let's go retro games and we click one of these icons let's select error this is a small sound that uh, you can play if we go into inferno and we go for secret found As you can see, these sounds are usable. And again, in our games, this could be beneficial because you can have a bear or a tiger or some other voice like this, for example. <coughs> Go directly through your microphone so you don't have to set up anything else for the voice mod to work. Additionally, you have the voice lab over here. Now, the voice lab works so that you create your own voices and you can save them as a preset. So if I would like to, for example, change the pitch of my voice. I could go to pitch. And change the pitch as I, as I need. The human eyes makes, or supposedly, makes the voice sound a little bit better. 
we're not gonna save this because I usually don't use the uh, the custom made voices. Uh, I don't have time to uh, work with all the voice lab things that I got over there, but there's an option for you to use different things over there. Um, okay, so let's get back to uh, talking about voice lab in general. How flexible it is? Well, voice lab has around 100 voices right now. Oh, I don't need my hair prints. Uh, headphones. So voice lab has over 100 voices right now. Uh, some of them are very similar to each other. The robotic voices are similar. The deep voices are similar to each other. So it's not like each and every um, of those 100 voices is something unique, but uh, it is flexible. I use it when I need to uh, role play a female sometimes, when I need to role play a robot, when I'm using sending stones uh, or things that are or communication devices. So I want my voice to sound a little bit different. Um, my party, for example, has a Cobalt Sidekick, and for the Cobalt, I use a little slightly higher pitch voice than my own, uh, so that it is distinguishable. Uh, it allows me to put less strain on my own throat and on my own voice. I'm not that bad at voices, uh, and I know how to use my voice box, but uh, I feel that software like this allows you to make full usage of what you have and, um, and simply is easier sometimes uh, to, uh, to produce. Additionally, you don't have to remember what type of voice someone had because you can save that as a preset and use it later on. If I have a Cobalt, I know that the Cobalt uh, preset is my Cobalt voice. I don't have to worry about anything, uh, including, uh, including that. Is it integrable with other pieces of software? Easily. As mentioned a couple of times, Voice Mod uses or works as a, a virtual microphone, so it simply replaces your microphone in your system and you feed the um, and you feed the signal to your desired application. Now, a thing that I noticed is that some voices or some applications, like for example Discord, unfortunately, uh, and their noise cancellation uh, feature, also cancels out some of the voices that I use in voice mode. So, if you have push to talk, that would probably be okay. But if you have voice activity in voice in Discord, it, this could lead to you being inaudible or uh, absolutely distorted due to the noise cancellation options that are in different pieces of software. I didn't try it, to try it out with Zoom. I imagine it would be roughly uh, similar. Now, is it trustworthy? I would say yes. Um, you will find a million topics about voice mod being a virus. Now, why is that? Uh, that's pretty simple. Voice mod is aimed at gamers of uh, things like Fortnite, CSGO, and things like that. Uh, and a big fan base of these games are young people that can't afford the software. And since they can't afford it, but they want a lot, uh, they try to crack it, steal it, and so on. So uh, there's a mil also a million links to cracked and hacked software. Uh, and I can guarantee you that 99% of that has some kind of Trojan or virus on the top of that. So if you're going for voice mod, please just download the trial and buy the tri buy the official version from the official uh, distributor. Don't go for some hacked version. You will you can easily ruin your machine. Um, and uh, that what I said before a second also connect with connects with the perspective that the perspectives that voice mod has and what I see how it develops. And voice mod develops into something that is more streaming oriented, Twitch oriented, maybe a little bit less game oriented. Um, I know, for example, that they are developing or they developed actually a plugin that allows you to change the voice of, uh, of a streamer from your side as a viewer. If you donate something, the streamer can enable an option for them to, for you to change uh, their voice. Uh, so this is the, the, the direction in which they are going with their, uh, with their software. Um, so for us, it means that it will be roughly in the same space uh, or same headspace uh, as it is now. That is all about voice mod. I don't use the software frequently, although when I use it, it, it allows me to put less strain on my throat, less uh, stress on me. Uh, it allows me to forget voices that my NPCs had because I have them saved somewhere in a safe space. I don't use the full capabilities of voice mod. And if you are more tech oriented or you like things like that, I think that you can benefit from the software even more than I do. Uh, I hope you like this episode. If yes, you know what to do. And I hope to see you around real soon. Bye.